morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your resident tinker and meta rotter, and this is the MetaRot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now this week, as we start slowing down just a little bit at the uh, tail end of the Ori Meta fan competition models uh, with Anahop, Mystery Cat, and uh, Taki Ashihime, this week we're going to be going back to uh, Metarot's roots, essentially, with direct upgrades of a very well-beloved Elemental series from the days of Metarot 2. Now, for folks that have been playing a while, a good couple months ago we did see the introduction of a uh, Wind Silk, which was the first of this upgraded series. This week alone, we're going to be seeing the, int the introduction of two more upgrades, as you see here. Flame Tisala and Aqua Crown finally get their upgrades, and boy oh boy are they packing some punches with the kind of effects they're going to be bringing to the team and to any fields that they're on. But, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what was officially announced this week, starting of course with the gotcha banners and what we can expect. Starting that lineup, of course, are the new models as you see here, and that lineup is SLD-01 Flame Vulcan, with a kit of Fighter Core, Double Flame, Float Legs, and the Leg Ability of Spearhead. And it's also worth noting that this is the first instance of Fighter Core on a female, which will be a really nice addition to anyone that's trying to make use of mono female teams with melee based parts. So, even for that reason alone, Flame Vulcan is going to be a very invaluable ally. Additionally, we also see the introduction of WDN01 Aqua Nereid with a kit of Wide Repair, Revive, Rebirth, Sea Legs, and the Leg Ability of White Mage, which we started seeing a lot more, just a little more often these days as well with a lot of more powerful healers. And I have to say, originally, compared to the original Elementals, which were really just kind of there, mostly gimmicky more than anything else, I have to admit these upgrades have certainly been exceeding a lot of expectations with just what they bring to the field. Aquaneri, uh, uh, yeah, Aquaneri alone is probably going to be an absolutely incredible healer if built right. Probably on the same tier of, um, of a particle even to a point, just based on the ability of having wide repair, revive, and rebirth at any given disposal, pretty much at any given time. And the stats alone are already pretty solid too. Now, in addition to these two, which are going to be, of course, going to be the main highlights for this week, we do also have some reruns of very popular models as well. Starting that lineup of, as well is the original upgraded model of the Elemental series, SLF-01 Wind Sylph, with a kit of Panic, Suction, Hyper Tornado, Flight Legs, and the Leg Ability of Continuous P. In addition, we also have DDL-01 Belzelga making a return as well, with a kit of Restore, Double Sacrifice, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Carrier. We also have one that we have not seen in a pretty hot minute, and I'm not sure if that's honestly good or bad, with the, with the return of CKN0 Crimson King, with a kit of Triple Destroy, Melee Variant, Flight Legs, and the Leg Ability of Elusive. Then, last but not least, ROZ0 Dead Quasar, with a kit of Laser, Bug, Destroy, Multi Legs, and the Leg Ability of G Control. Now, it's also worth noting that Dead Quasar also is capable of Tuna for some extra bonuses. So if he wasn't already very solid right out of the gate, being able to tune him up and get Grant some extra upgrades will really make him an absolute force to be reckoned with anytime he's on the field. And that's most certainly not saying anything for uh, Crimson King, Belzelga, or even Windsilk either. Crimson King alone has been very well known for his role as a shield buster and a very dangerous one at that. Belzelga for just very powerful 1-2 punchy arms and Windsilk for the upgraded wind-powered or wind-based uh, interruption-based kit that she brings to the table. Now, these aren't the only banners that we'll be seeing these this, this week, though, however. We also see a rerun of spotlight banners for all four of the previous model or of the previous version of the Ori of the Elementals, which includes Wind Cecil at SLF-0 with a uh, slip, defense, and evade seal, flight legs, and a sail, SLD-0 Flame Tisala with heater, double fire, float legs, and generator, GNM0 Earth Chrono, which is the only one not quite ready with an upgrade just yet, with Counter Guard, Double Guard, Tank Legs, and Adversity. And last but not least, WDN0 Aqua Crown, with Rebirth, Double Field Repair, Sea Legs, and Illusion. Now, one of the big things to pay, to pay attention to with these four are the fact that they are Spotlights, which means they are basically available at any time in any banner and including the permanent pool itself. 
though you really don't want to focus too heavily on any of these four, and really the only reason they're up is primarily because of the celebration of two more models getting their upgrades, uh, Flame T. Sala and Aqua Crown this week respectfully, uh, respectively, and, uh, Wind, C and Wind Cecil, of course, getting the first original upgrade to them. I am more than certain, though, given that this that we are also seeing a two-weaker event, which I will be getting to in just a second, that we might just see Earth Chrono get, the, get her last upgrade to round out the quartet, so we have something else that we can see and just see what she what her new upgraded form brings to the table. Now with the Fierce Battles this week, it looks like it's going to be very heavily emphasis on Ladies Week, and I suspect it might just be the same next week as well. But starting that lineup on that top row is FSL Zero Fancy Roll with Virus, Hammer, Napalm, Flight Legs, and the leg ability of Mascot. We also have FEA, FEI-01 Flapper Kung Fu with Guard Boost, Double Break Hammer, Biped Legs, and Rumbling. And then lastly on this top row, HKG-0 Hawk Dacker with Triple Wave, Flight Legs, and the Excel Leg Ability. On this bottom row, we're starting off with BPB-0 Vorpole Rabbit from the Zodiac Rabbit type from Metarot R with Triple Anti-Air, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Bullet Rain. We also have HPP-01 Hippopotensia with Conceal, Double Break Hammer, Wheeled Legs, and No Guard. And then last but not least, LBR-0 Libra with Gravity Guard, Anti-Air, Anti-Sea, and, and Float Legs and the Leg Ability of Premacy. Now honestly, it was really kind of hard to decide on the MVP of the week this week. Primarily because all of them have something really useful they can bring to the table, even if some are more niche than others. Flapper Kung Fu and Hip Hop Atencia, for instance, for Break Hammer, even if they are both heavy. Uh, Vorpal Rabbit and, uh, and Libra, as well as examples for Anti Air, if you need that for your Tornado Anti Air Spam. Hawk Dacker and uh, Fancy Roll for more, more of your conventional ailments or conventional combat kind of needs. So I'm not really going to give an MVP of the week to anyone because they're all worth farming in one form or another. And who's going to get the higher priority? I'm going to leave entirely to you based on your needs and what's currently in your uh, meta in your libraries. Now with the event in particular, like I said, it will be a two-weeker, this time highlighting a lot of year one or early year rerun events, uh, rerun rewards, which is going to be very, very exciting. This time around, we have, we'll have an opportunity to earn or collect, if you're, a, if you're a new player, the Ghost Medal, which has a mastery in melee, healing, and setup with a leg mastery in wheel, float, and flight. We can also earn RAP-0M Rappy, the original mascot type, with Charge Plant, Double Sacrifice, Flight Legs, uh, float, float Legs, I believe, and uh, Mascot. And then we also can earn Meta Rodder 9, the R and N rank versions, respectively. So not a lot of really big rewards if you're a seasoned veteran that's been playing longer than a couple years, but if you're a new player just starting out, you're definitely not going to want to miss out, because another medal you can add to the collection is going to be very, very useful in basically any kind of format that you will need as you build teams and look for flexibility. The event itself, of course, will be ticket-based, so mixed parts will be encouraged across the board. That means you are going to want to try to use at least one part, usually no more, across the team as you're building it for the bonuses. For the blue ticket bonuses, as you see here, Belzelga and the four elementals will give you a plus five each for the blue tickets for each for the one part equipped across each bot on the team. Plus three for Dead Quasar and uh, Crimson King. A plus two for Yellow Crick and Rappy, and I suspect Yellow Crick might just be next week's event reward too, which will also be a rerun, and the Fierce Battles at a plus one each. Blue tickets for Meta Rodder, same case. For the R-ranked for the R version of Arase, Shiden, uh, Nai, Hikaru, and Iki will give you a plus three bonus each, and a plus two for the N-ranks respectively. For the golden tickets, as you see here, the two new models, uh, Flame Vulcan and Aqua Nereid, will give you a uh, plus three each, and Wind Silt at a plus one. And Meta Rodder Knight at plus three for the SR version, and the SR versions of each of the other four Meta Rodders respectively will give you a plus one per each equipped. So honestly, compared to most other events, I don't think this one's going to be super heavy on, um, on, uh, on Gacha, primarily because everything here with the exception of a couple of the rerun banners, are all limp, are all uh, pickups, whether in the permanent pool or the Meta Rodder pool. So I really don't think you have to worry about having to scrounge for parts, because 
more more likely than not, you probably would have collected at least one or two parts of everybody here by this point anyway. And the same can be said for Meta Rodders as well, if you stayed on top of pulling from that banner whenever you get the opportunity. And might I clarify, not the permanent Meta Rodder banner, if you have, unless you have tickets, but the, um, the limited Meta Rodder banners as they come and go. On the community front, we are still always looking for translators to assist us with any current projects or endeavors. Right now, MetaRot 3 is still in that tentative completion state, but still with a lot more work left to do on it. And we still would love to work on other projects like 4 and 5 and Navi and so on. But we need hands and, uh, and manpower in order to do so. So if you are knowledgeable in coding, cleaning Japanese, or have some time and have some time on your hands, or if you know somebody that does, Definitely feel free to join us in our community Discord, ask around or send them here and ask around. We can most certainly bring them up to speed on what has been done, fill them in on what still needs done, and get them in touch with the right people. We would also love to work on other projects like the Metarot Reloaded manga as well. We have a very small handful of chapters done, but really not a lot to amount to a whole lot of the story or its premise. On the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, I decided to find this piece here by my dear friend Moen on Twitter, who also hosts the unofficial Metarot fan club on Twitter as well, who does a lot of very nice and very soft art as well. I've seen lots and lots of pieces through them and shared an equal amount of them as well, and every piece is honestly better than the last. This one here by Marine Healer as well is just another beautiful piece that they've worked on of everyone's favorites, or more iconic, I should say, in recent games, um, healer type, mermaid type. That has come to the that has joined the fray as a very well known and well beloved model of the Mermaid series. We also have this one here by my friend Piku Gatsu, and honestly, there really isn't there really isn't anything special about the piece. Well, they're all special, but you know what I mean. But it's just the fact that it's Chrono Jill, and I am I'm an absolute sucker for any kind of Chrono Jill art. So if you want to make sure that it gets highlighted, or if you want to boost your chance, I'm gonna see it. Definitely highlight it of the autumn colored yellow, um, orange and black colored beetle type because I probably will see it and I absolutely will enjoy it. Definitely give both of these artists a follow if you'd like to see more of their art in your feed. One final parting note as well before I say farewell. As a friendly reminder, I am always open for commission, both 2D and 3D. I can do live 2D models ready to rig. They're all cut up and ready to go. I can do standard 2D art as well at varying degrees of, com of uh, complexity and detail. I can do emotes and 3D models as well. The whole process from props to models, to rigging, to art, to uh, UV mapping and optimizing, the whole process, project, ready to go, and basically drag and drop in any other program you'd want to use it in. And I also keep my prices low on purpose like this, so you aren't having to break, you don't have to break the bank in order to have to collect assets, especially if you are just starting out in the uh, content creating or VTubing career, and want to try to get a hold of some stuff without, well, with a good quality, without having to eat the wallet to do so. Definitely reach out to me on Discord or on Twitter if you are curious for more and would like to possibly work something out. But with all that being said, like I said, relatively light week in terms of what to expect aside from this event. A couple hints already and some strong assumptions as to what we can expect next week as well. But as I, but if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page or the Metarot or the Metabots Forever community on there, which is still skyrocketing past 21 now close to 22,000 members and still growing by the day, which is honestly shocking to me just how fast it's grown. You can also follow us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below if you want to keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action. This includes any new links to merchandise, fan art, my weekly episodes, or anything else of the like. That's often the first place you're going to hear it before it goes anywhere else across the net. Lastly, you can also follow me on Twitter, like I said, at Isagamikura. If you have any questions or feedback or comments, if you want to commission me, or if you are a content creator of any kind and want to collaborate with me. Whether well, that means having you here on my channel on the MNN, of which there is always an empty seat here at the desk, or you're, if you'd like to have me stop in on your channel for an interview or a friendly chat or a game, I would absolutely love to coordinate and try to make something happen. Lastly, do give SoaZ2 and Saint Cisco a follow as well on Twitter. It's very dear friends of mine. I actually had the honor of being able to... to uh, uh, guest host on uh, Sane's channel recently uh, this this past Sunday, and it was honestly a blast as we talked about uh, nostalgia trips and older uh, older TV shows and games and anime, and just kind of had a chance to really gush about it for a little bit with their with their uh, community and their followers. But it was honestly a blast. I enjoyed myself, and if you'd like to see more um, zany creativity that is Sane Cisco, definitely give them a follow on Twitter, on Twitch, and on YouTube as well, and show your support not just for me but also for them as well. 
That being said, as always, I do appreciate you all for stopping by, just as you always do. Until next time, this is your host, Kurt Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.